Hi, my name is Sachi Levent-Levy of BlogGeekMe. This time, I want to discuss streaming protocols and low latency. And for low latency and streaming protocols, we need to first understand what it means. And by what it means, I mean live streaming. So we've got multiple participants, multiple viewers. They want to watch a live stream, something that happens now. They do that over the cloud today, over the internet. And there is somewhere a source for that media that they are streaming. That source for the purpose of being live can be surveillance cameras, can deal with auctions or bidding, esports and sports, webinars, broadcasting, e-learning, and a lot of other use cases. For that to be live streaming, we need to make it very, very short in terms of the latency. And these are like the typical latencies that we will see for different protocols. If we use different protocols for streaming, they are going to have different latencies to them. Let's take one of the most common alternatives in terms of streaming pot protocols, HLS and dmpeg Dash. These two protocols today offer streaming with latencies of 20 seconds or more. So we can't really consider it live. This is why for both of them, we've got the LL variants of them, low latency variants of HLS and Dash, LL HLS and LL Dash, with CMUF. CMUF is a kind of a framework for mapping files, uh, chunks into files. And this enables us to run HLS and Dash in low latency. And then we get anywhere between two to 10 seconds of latency, depending on what restrictions, if, uh, what of the optimizations we make for these uh, files and these streams. RTMP, an older protocol, can get us to around two seconds of latency, sometimes a bit less than that. And then there is SRT, usually handled across browsers and not to end users, though it can be used there as well, also at around two seconds. And then there is WebRTC. And WebRTC is a sub-second -sub protocol, which means that in most cases, and for almost, almost all use cases, WebRTC will get us to below one second of latency. Now, WebRTC is capable of doing that because it sacrifices some of the capabilities of the other protocols, like the ability to retransmit data. If data get lost along the way because of network congestions or issues, then they can get retransmitted by the other protocols, something that WebRTC cannot do. Because if I need to retransmit, it means that I lose time, it means that I lose latency. Okay. Let's look at these streaming protocols and compare them by other metrics, not only latency. So if we take these protocols from oldest to newest, RTMP towards WebRTC, and look at browser support, then RTMP and SRT do not offer browser support that, it is, that is inherent in the protocol. We cannot really use them inside browsers. Whereas HLS, LLHSLS, MPEG Dash, and WebRTC are all native to browsers. So you can stream these things, these videos, this media into browsers. For latency, we think WebRTC is the best, HLS and MPEG Dash is the worst. Anywhere between half a second latency towards 20 plus seconds latencies can be seen here. In terms of directionality, all of these protocols are unidirectional, which means that if you use RTMP or HLS or SRT, you're sending your media in one direction. WebRTC was built and designed for conversations, making it bidirectional by nature. I can send and receive data for my user at the same time. We will see why that is important in a later video. This also indicates the focus of these protocols. RTMP, HLS, MPEG Dash, and SRT are all streaming protocols. This is what they do. WebRTC, interestingly, started as a communication protocol and has been adopted by the streaming industry for live streaming because of it, its inherent advantages. From a customizability standpoint, WebRTC has the best potential of customizing it because it has a lot of different building blocks in it and you can see different vendors using different parts of these building blocks to build their solutions in very different ways. Other protocols are there to do one thing and one thing only, which is streaming. So which protocol should you use for your streaming use case? I guess the answer is it depends. Okay, it depends on a lot of things. And here are three questions that I want you to ask yourself. First of all, 
What is your media source? What are you trying to stream? Is that a surveillance camera? Are these people talking? Is it a file from a disk somewhere or something else? Then the second question is who are the viewers? What are they using? Are they using a mobile device, a browser? Are they using an application? What kind of networks do they have? And then the last question, which is the most important probably, is how much latency can you live with? You need to remember that the lower the latency, the more energy you need to spend in order to support that, which means that the costs are going to be higher as well for providing such a solution. So if you can live with higher latencies, go do that. But if what you need really is low latency, then you should probably go with WebRTC. What exactly Ant Media has to offer here? Ant Media Server today supports WebRTC, LL-CMF, as well as HLS, giving you the gamut of solutions when it comes to latencies. This enables you to offer solutions that are with standard latency, low latency, or ultra, ultra low latency, with the ability to scale these solutions to large number of viewers, with adaptive bitrate, which means that you will support different types of networks with different types of users. Thank you.